Welcome back to Quarantined with the Pastors. I believe this is episode four. 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 I believe sure. this is episode four of Quarantined with the Pastors. We're doing just a little short video uh, for you today. And one of the things we thought would be fun is for each of us to pick uh, a few books that really mean a lot to us or that we like. Uh, because again, Right now we're social distancing, so the odds are you have some time on your hands. So what do you do with some of that time on your hands? Well, on Wednesday we talked about studying the Bible. Now today we're just going to make some book recommendations for you um, that, that, again, you can uh, spend some time reading. So I'll go first, um, unless somebody else wants to go first. Go first. No, okay. <laughs> I'll go first. Uh, I'm going to start with Books. one of my favorite authors, and if you've heard me preach or teach, you know I'm a big C.S. Lewis fan. Uh, so my first two, I'll do these two VS together. This is one book. Um, but two of my favorite C.S. Lewis books. So the first one is Mere Christianity, which, you know, if you're going to read C.S. Lewis, you got to start with Mere Christianity. It is what the title says. It is Mere or Basic Christianity. So this is Lewis's look at... What is basic Christianity? What does it really mean to be a Christian? And so that's mere Christianity. The other book that has always been one of my favorites uh, is called A Grief Observed by C.S. Lewis. I actually haven't read that one. It's a good one. This is, especially if you've uh, recently or ever lost someone in your life, uh, this is um, C.S. Lewis's journal writings when he lost his wife. So when his wife passed away, when she died, these were originally his kind of journal entries that he turned into a book of grief observed. So if you ever lost anyone or um, uh, have experienced grief in your life really in any way, this is, is a, a great book to really read during that time of grief. So again, two, two of my favorites from C.S. Lewis uh, are kind of my first pick. So that's mine. Pastor Ed, why don't you go? All right. My, my first pick is a book. Uh, it's called The Best of A.W. Tozer. I don't know how many of you might be familiar with A.W. Tozer, but he was converted when he was 17 years old uh, on the street corner by a street preacher. We don't see that anymore, but a street preacher uh, led him to the Lord. And what this book does is it actually takes about 10 of his books, and uh, there's 52 chapters in this particular one. It takes about 10 of his books, picks out certain chapters that have to do with um, things that he had written about. His most famous is probably The Pursuit of Holiness. Uh, he is very big on talking about holy living. He's very big on talking about getting to know God. And again, this is a book that I think uh, kind of sums up a number of his books. It'd be great for you to read. How you, Barter? All right, so um, it's not a... Not a Christian book or anything, but uh, it's the, this is just one of my favorite books. It's the uh, the Revenant, and uh, I actually don't know. What, I don't. I'm not even gonna try to say the author's name. Um, but it's about this guy. Yeah, it's great. It's about this man who worked for a fur trading company, and he was mauled close to death by a bear. And um, whenever they were uh, true story. Yeah, it's a true story. Oh, okay. um, whenever they were trying to go on their way back with this man that's halfway dead, they're trying to bring him back to uh, the actual uh, station they were at. Um, they assigned this guy named uh, Fitzpatrick to stay and watch him because at some point it just became burdensome. And they assigned him to stay and uh, make sure he dies and gets a proper burial and stuff. Um, Fitzpatrick just left him for dead. So pretty much... Uh, this guy named Hugh Glass, I believe is his name. Uh, yeah, Hugh Glass. Um, he's the guy who was mauled by a bear. Um, pretty much wants revenge from Fitzpatrick for leaving him there without letting him die, basically. So um, he pretty much gains back his strength, uh, miraculously just kind of survives, and he goes back and he tries to hunt down the guy who left him for dead. So it's a really entertaining read. But Interesting. It's nowhere near theological. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. All right, uh, next, uh, one of my all-time favorite books is Celebration of Discipline by Richard Foster. This is a book all about the spiritual disciplines. Again, if you've been uh, in my preaching or teaching, you know I'm a big fan of the spiritual disciplines. I actually wrote my dissertation on the spiritual disciplines. Uh, so there's a, a one chapter per spiritual discipline. So there's a chapter on prayer, 
chapter on meditation, a chapter on fasting, on study, on simplicity, solitude, worship, confession, celebration. Uh, so again, just a, a great, great book on each one of the many different spiritual disciplines. Very practical book. So it gives you very practical advice on how to practice the spiritual discipline. So for instance, fasting, which is one not a lot of people practice anymore. It gives you some practical tips for how you can go about fasting and why we should still include the spiritual discipline of fasting in our life. And so again, Celebration of Discipline by Richard Foster. A great look at the spiritual disciplines. So one of my favorites. All right, my, my next book. Uh, it's a book that if you uh, have been around me very much, you know that this is a book that uh, I really think is one of the best books that you can read as a Christian. Uh, it's called The Purpose Driven Life. It's written by Pastor Rick Warren from Saddleback Church in uh, California, a church that he founded and, and now has campuses uh, in multiple countries. This is one of the first books that he wrote. And this book talks about how to get to know God, what your purpose in life is. And you know, one of the things we all need to know is what is our purpose? And one of the things that Rick talks about is he talks about the fact that it's not about me, it's all about God. And one of the things you'll see as we talk about these books, there's a lot of different kind of books out there. There are spiritual health books, uh, there are books like this that I think are just good practical books. There are good books that are just there just for good reading. So there's a lot of good things out there. So uh, just kind of look at some of the things that we're talking about, maybe pick one of those. But Purpose Driven Life is a book that uh, we've used to teach from a number of times on Wednesday nights uh, and various times on Sunday mornings. And the people that have gone through this have gotten a lot out of it. So again, Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren is one worth picking up reading uh, during this time but you're spending a lot of time at home. Like it. You look so tight. I'm bigger now. You're but... still tight. Switch, just, just just so you can see that maybe he's actually this tiny. I'm but... bigger in person. There we go. <laughs> there we go. There go. Now now that's the first time. Now you kind of look tiny. That's my, impossible. <laughs> my wife said that every time that we do this, yeah. she said that you look the smallest of all of us. I said, well, you are the smallest of all of us. Now, now, now it's uh, better. <laughs> now let's trade I want to switch now. back. I don't like being small. It's too late. You're going to be small, Parker. Well, you got to hold the books. <laughs> all right, show them now. This one is Not a Fan by Kyle Eidelman. Uh, actually, the college students here uh, rooted. We are uh, going through the actual study. Um, it's really following the uh, question it says right on the back are you a fan or are you a follower um, one thing I like about Kyle Eidelman is I have never read a book of his where I haven't felt like trash afterwards because of just that's what we're looking for is we want yeah. to make you feel like trash but no he's he's very convicting it's really talking about are you actually in the game for Christ are you actually one of the players on the field or are you someone who likes to look like someone who is a Christian who is like in the stands cheering but not actually doing anything. So if you're looking for a good convicting book, I'm not a fan. Not a fan. Uh, my next book is actually a book many of you probably have read or went through. This is a marriage book. It is called What Did You Expect by Paul David Tripp. If you are married or if you ever plan on being married, this is the book you need to read. We went through this book in our marriage class. Uh, a year or two ago, this is a book I use all the time, still to this day. So again, if you're married or if you ever intend on being married, this is the first book I would recommend for you to read. What did you expect? It's all about the fact that, you know what, in marriage, marriage is one sinner married to another sinner. And so it's going to be rough sometimes. It's not going to be easy. It gets the title. What did you expect? We oftentimes go into marriage thinking it's going to be wonderful and there's going to be no problems whatsoever. When you've got one sinner married to another sinner, you're going to have problems. And so Paul David Tripp does a great job. Again, I recommend this book, anybody that's married. My next book is called uh, Six Hours, uh, One Day, uh, Six Hours, One Friday. And it's a book by Max Licato. And again, as I said, that we're talking about a lot of different kind of books. This is a good Easter book. This talks about what takes place on the Friday in which Christ was crucified. And it gives us a, pers a perspective of what his death means to us. And we certainly need to understand that as we come into the Easter season. What does the death mean? What does the resurrection mean? Max Cato does a really good job on this. And now again, this is not a study book, 
This is more just a book for you to read, but I believe there'll be a lot of things that you get out of it as you understand more about what is it exactly that Jesus went through on that Friday that he was crucified, before he was crucified and up to crucifixion and then ultimately the resurrection. So again, Max Licato has written a lot of great books. I really like this one. You're right. Well, this is my last one, but it's kind of a three in one. It it's, is. I love it. I'm, I'm currently reading the uh, Space Trilogy. The first one in the trilogy is Out of the Silent Planet. It is by C.S. Lewis. C.S. Uh, Lewis. We love C.S. Lewis here. <laughs> but um, it's, a lot of you have read Narnia uh, by C.S. Lewis. Like, is it, all of them have a different name, right? Narnia. Yes. Chronicles of Narnia Chronicles. is the whole yeah. series, yeah. Yeah. Um, but this is kind of a few steps uh, uh, above Narnia reading level. Yes. Um, and it's about this guy named Ransom. And uh, he pretty much gets kidnapped and he's going to Mars and he's pretty much just chilling there right now trying to escape his kidnappers and all that stuff and I haven't read the uh, second or third one yet but I'm about halfway done with the first one I've read the ball very very good um, again if you like if you like the Chronicles of Narnia you'll love the space trilogy especially as an adult because it is a little bit more a uh, little deeper reading and there's also still a lot of good allegory there for the Christian so mm -hmm. all three are great I've heard is it, is it the second or third one that has the most symbolism third that third. hideous strength is yeah. the third one it's very symbolic yeah and, uh, I know for, you know what we should do next uh, for another video we should do songs that we listen to Ooh, that'd be a good video yeah, but, um, and then I could sing for you guys <laughs> that'd be a terrible video <laughs> but there's a lot of uh, Christian bands there's one I think of um, in particular that's just called the silent planet mm -hmm. and um, that's the name of the first book in the space trilogy by the way is out of the silent planet yeah and uh, a lot of bands actually have taken a lot from these books and uh, a lot of bands have done concept albums from it so oh, cool. that'd be fun excellent you or me uh me i think go right in i'm out of books last book <laughs> actually it'd be you but you're like you got two more books i, I, got one more I, book. I have i have one i i don't think that we could end uh, uh going through some books without at least bringing up one of billy graham's books billy graham as you know uh, passed away recently. He wrote a number of tremendous books. He's probably uh, kind of known as the evangelist of America. This particular book is a Billy Graham book on angels. Uh, and he writes about uh, all of the different times that angels appear in the, in the scripture and what angels were doing during that period of time. This is a book probably a lot of you have already read. If you haven't read it, it's worth picking up and reading uh, because again, you can't go wrong with Billy Graham information. All right, one last book and we're done. Uh, my turn. It is, uh, this is a fiction book. So again, all those that I mentioned earlier were nonfiction. This is one of my favorite fiction books. It is called Hood by Stephen Lawhead. Um, I don't want to call it Christian fiction because usually Christian fiction is bad. <laughs> but Stephen well, Lawhead. Frank Law Brady's pretty okay. Frank Brady's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, but Stephen Lawhead is a believer. He is a Christian. And when you write, read it, you can tell that, that there's some kind of Christian perspective there. But... It is a modern day, but no, it's not modern day. It's a recent, because uh, it was released. <laughs> anyway, um, it is a retelling of the Robin Hood story. So it's set in like 1100 AD, so it's a thousand years ago. Um, but it's a retelling of the Robin Hood story. There's actually three of these. It's a trilogy. Hood is the first book. Uh, Scarlet is the second book. And uh, Tuck is the third book. And so it's a, a trilogy about Robin Hood. One of my favorites. It's one that I've reread uh, multiple times. And so I really like it. But those are our book suggestions for some reading while you are quarantined. Uh, I think we gave you a pretty good variety there. Some marriage material, some spiritual growth material, some fiction material, some sci-fi material. Um, so if you like to read, or you know what? If you don't like to read, maybe you ought to give it a try again. But those are some book suggestions from your pastor. Uh, pastors, sorry. We, we, we've said this, I think, uh, uh, each time that we've uh, uh, sat and talked with you. And one of the things is this, remember this, keep your mind being filled with the positive things. You know, we talked about scripture in our last one. We're talking about good books to read this time. Don't let your mind drift off into negative things. Once you start thinking negative, you know, then you become a negative person. You begin to believe negative thoughts. There, there is a virus out there.
people are sick. It's people nice. are passing away. I didn't know that. Well, oh, okay. yeah, oh. I'm just trying to pass that along, David. I didn't know. But didn't know. the biggest thing is this. God's going to take us through it. God's going to take you through it. God's going to take us to the other side. There's light on the end of the tunnel. We're going to get there because we're trusting God and believing God. Fill your mind with positive things and let God work through you. Absolutely. I'm going to pray this time. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord God, just thanking you for who you are. God, you are just a beautiful, good, holy, glorious God. And we just, just bask in your presence. Lord, we thank you for your blessings. Lord, even during this difficult time that we're going through, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you that you've given us this technology, this ability to stay connected with one another. And so, Lord, I pray that we use this time wisely, that we redeem the time. Lord God, we believe that nothing, nothing slips by you. This is, uh, you know exactly what's going on. And Lord God, you can bring good out of this. And so, Lord, we just pray that your will is done in all things. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 All right, you got to turn it off. I'm going to turn it off. Here I come. <laughs>